Hi, my name is Adrian Valentine and welcome to my Sunday review. Today I want to talk about Our Souls at Night by Kent Hara. Alright, let's talk. Our Souls at Night was published posthumously last year in 2015. Hara, dying of lung cancer at the age of 71 in 2014, wrote this, his final novel, On the Verge of Death. Two elderly acquaintances decide to embark on a new kind of relationship. They begin to sleep with one another, without sex, kind of like cuddle buddies. Their relationship is written in a way that transcends any kind of connection they would have achieved through sex. After reading so many novels that glorify and perpetuate sex as an end all and be all to existence, it is refreshing to have a change of pace. Essentially, this is not lazy writing. It does not use sex as a tool to progress or use it as an overall aim to achieve. And by that I mean this book doesn't fall into any cliches. It is a story about everyday life and what it means to have that life be put into jeopardy knowing that you are going to die soon. Friends pass away suddenly and consistently, kids grow to become different people altogether, relationships wither away. Those who thought you would spend the rest of your life with just disappear. Everybody seemingly has these expectations of what life will end up being, especially when you're you're young, just start going to school and then you're working and you get married and you have kids and whatnot, but things sometimes don't work out that way. With these expectations in mind, people can sometimes become really upset when things don't work out the way they expected. Lewis, when he's reflecting back on the way his wife felt about him, he says, She had a kind of idea, a notion of how life should be, how marriage should be, but that was never how it was with us. I failed her in that way. She should have had somebody else. That kind of self-critique is just one example of how in-depth the characters are. It's hard to remember that they are fictional and that this isn't an autobiographical piece. So here we have Addie and Lewis, two acquaintances at the tail end of their lives. They are both widowed and spending the rest of their days accepting that one day they just won't wake up. There isn't much to look forward to for these two individuals until one day Addie approaches Lewis and proposes that they spend the night together, just sleeping just talking. Through their conversations, the reader is exposed to their lives, kids that they've had, what's happened to those children, the tragedies, the triumphs, the beautiful stuff, and the bad stuff. Through this relationship, newly found bond, Lewis confides in Addie, he says, so life hasn't turned out right for either of us, not the way we expected, except it feels good now, at this moment. I feel like this novel is Harold's final notes on life, and it comes from the perspective of a man who has lived all he could live. This novel is fantastically realistic and poetic in the summary of everyday life and it manages to stay interesting through every chapter. It won't be at the edge of your seat while you read it, but it certainly does evoke a relaxing atmosphere. It's a very comfortable and easy read that will make you reflect on what is truly important when all is said and done. Overall, I give this book a 3 out of 5. It's not going to throw any curveballs at you. It's just a good perspective into old age. I also have a website, avvalentine.com. Please check it out for more book reviews, travel blogs, and short stories. Let me know what you think might be your biggest regret when you're old in the comments down below. Good talk.